um, there's another person here that I would like to thank, and that's Paul Michaels, because he changed my world and opened my horizons by bringing me to Ireland. A few years ago, he brought me in to do research on, research on Island Moor, and in that process, I discovered that Ernie O'Malley often visited Island Moor. And so I looked in a little deeper and wanted to find a little nugget or a piece of history associated with Ernie O'Malley. So I called Cormac O'Malley and told him what I was doing. And to my delight, he was willing to do pretty much anything to help me. And that included inviting me to Connecticut to go through a box of photographs that might have some photographs of Island Moore in it, but he wasn't sure. They were mostly negatives. And so I gathered the equipment to view and digitize negatives. And it was about two years ago, I sat down in Connecticut and started looking at these negatives. And there were photographs of Island Moore in there. And all of these photographs were in there. And even as negatives, I could see that these were not ordinary family snapshots. These were works of art that needed to be shared with the world and primarily with the people of Mayo. And for the past two years, Cormac and I have been working to put the collection together and the book together. And this is the culmination of our work. There's one story that I would like to share with you about Ernie O'Malley. I, I was a novice on Irish landscape, and particularly, I was a novice on Irish literature. <coughs> I had never heard of Ernie O'Malley until a couple of years ago. Many of you will know that he was a lover of art. Many people know he had a relationship with Jack Yates and he was friends with Louis Labrocki. But during his time in America, he formed a friendship with one of America's premier modern photographers. His name was Paul Strand and they met around 1930 in New Mexico. And they would wander around Taos, New Mexico, looking at landscape, and Paul would take pictures, and they became friends. And Paul was um, reached a low point in his work and wasn't very inspired. And Ernie talked him in to, well, suggested that he go to Mexico. Ernie had been, and he thought that that would help Paul Strand. So Paul Strand went to Mexico in 1932, and Ernie O'Malley went to New York and went about other business, such as finishing and publishing on Another Man's Wound. Paul Strand was in Mexico for two years. The work that he produced there changed modern American photography. He developed this new style called collective portraiture, where you photograph people and monuments and architecture of an area to describe and tell the story, create a portrait of the region. Well, the, the, the photographer who restored these photographs had worked on some of Paul Strand's books and he was not at all surprised to find out that Ernie and Paul Strand were friends. And he said that he saw the influence immediately. And, but I'm learning to become a historian and Cormac is doing a really good job of teaching me that I need to look at the facts and not jump to conclusions. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is Ernie wrote a lot, every day probably, diaries and letters and 
little notebooks, and Cormac has studied these inside and out. And there is absolutely no evidence that Ernie O'Malley ever saw or even heard of Paul Strand's Mexico collection at the time these photographs were taken. And that opens up many more questions. And for me particularly, I'm asking, okay, when Paul and Ernie were wandering around Taos, New Mexico, having discussions about photography, who was it that influenced who? And I don't have that answer. But what I can tell you for sure is this collection that he and Helen did is a collective portrait of Western Mayo. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay. The point you said, Christy, about just very briefly about O'Malley and Helen Hooker influencing or being influenced by what they saw in America. It's clear from uh, O'Malley's writing on art and his championship, championship of Jack B. Yeats and Louis Le Brocchi and many Jellet and these modern artists at the time that what, what he brought here, here in the 30s and 40s was indeed influenced by what he met in America. And also, when he was in Mexico, he was traveling in Mexico with the modernist poet Hart Crane. And again, uh, his, his criticism or his uh, snide comments sometimes about some of the Irish writers here at the time uh, suggests also he was bringing s something that he found in America uh, to his work here in different fields, not just photography. 